how to survive dragons? That's the question I've had to ask myself the last year planning Survival Plus. What would you need? Which items would you have to craft? Which combat maneuvers would you have to go through? All of that went into the planning of Survival Plus Dragons. In Shapescape, any product starts with the concept selection where we do our utmost to pick the most interesting and innovative concepts, preferably some that also are rich in learning and story. At the end of the month, or rather at the beginning of each month, we take a look at all the concepts uh, that have been submitted in the month before that, and we select the best ones and the ones that we see potential in to produce those. Once we've selected a concept, we then assign a producer to it. The producer starts brainstorming and developing the concept. To coordinate the process, we first lay out a big map of all the many blocks, tools, creatures you can find in the game, and how those interact with each other, the different crafting recipes, their effects and their purposes. And all of this is done in conjunction with the different production elements. Every branch working on the project will come with their contributions to how can they add the coolest possible elements. My job then becomes to filter those, select the best ones, and make sure everything is aligned for a good final product. Once the concept then actually gets approved and moves into production, the level design game and as a creation start working on it. Usually it starts with level design, basically laying a foundation of sorts, visual foundation, but also of course. As a designer, we'll be making the, the models, textures, sounds, all of the visual elements you'll see. And we want, really wanted to explore the many different options for dragons, and that's how we ended up with the different elemental dragons. The sleek ocean ones, or the arguably even sleeker and faster air dragons, the, the more conventional castle tear apart fire dragons, and even ground dragons, below ground and the cave dragons. Hey, I'm Tomasz and I'm a gameplay developer in Shapescape. Well, this project is very dragon-based, as the name suggests, uh, so the main challenge was to make the dragon work as planned, more or less. In gameplay, we put everything together. We take what level design and asset creation has done, and uh, we write functions, we write entities, items, mechanics, boss fights, stuff like that. The biggest challenge in this project was, was flying, and Minecraft doesn't handle this type of movement very well, especially for custom entities. We wanted to make, make the dragon mechanics feel good, so we focused a lot on getting the flying mechanics to be smooth. So it was quite a challenge. It would be relatively easy if the dragons would just fly around, but they had to attack the player, follow the player, land, and many, many more. Sometimes solutions are pretty simple, because you have just to find out what is not working and why. When you know that, it's usually pretty easy to fix. But no, not always. For flying, it wasn't that easy, and yes, brainstorming helped a lot, because I made contact with my fellow developer, Chris, who made flying entities in the past. Uh, we had a little but long talk, we shared our informations, and came up with some really cool ideas. We also made a big boss fight. There was a slight challenge with making the arena for it. We weren't quite sure how big that was gonna be. So I asked Luca to, to make a couple flat circles for me in level design of different sizes so we can agree on the arena size. So we went back and forth a little bit with level design. After some testing gameplay I figured like one of those would work best and so that's what we built around later. We try to focus on a couple of core aspects of this whole dragon theme and like really try to expand on them. We try to look at references in nature where those elements and those aspects of like fire, lava, and rocks are kind of combined. So that is how we ended up with these kind of unique rock formations that we use for our terrain. They basically have like big rocks with lava flowing in between them and like these really unique round shapes that we use. And we also kind of try to incorporate a bit more of that magic theme by also giving some of the stones like this unique carving that they have. After gameplay is finished, usually testers step in to take care of the project, so they are testing all of it like a normal player and tr they try actually trying to break it uh, to find some bugs. After they are done, they are sending it back with the feedback, so we are adding final polish, uh, bug fixing and do all the stuff needed to make it work again. Once the testing branch believes that the project is really done, ready for uh, release, then that's when we really start finalizing all the marketing material. We, we start on the trailer usually, we finish that, we finish the key art, finish screenshots, uh, panoramas, all that. The other 
focus point, I guess, in the level design of this project would be the actual boss arena. It is, I think, particularly important that that works right and well because it is basically the one point that the whole map builds up to. It is the focus point of the map in the end because it is the main incentive. And we really try to like make it as epic as possible. That is why we decided to like focus on the contrast between the uh, fire of the dragon and like the um, black substance of the terrain. So we try to go for like the black arena that contrasts nice with the uh, fire aspects of the dragon. So for Survival Plus Dragons, we wanted to, of course, market with dragons and it had to fit with our previous Survival Plus. So the key art had to be similar to that, which means the main focus of the image should be the end boss that we implemented. In this case, there was a Molten Dragon, just one object that we're focusing on, which is usually hard, but luckily the bosses of Survival Plus, they are pretty cool looking, so it's not hard to make that even cooler with some extra effects in Photoshop and some cool lighting in Sinopher but we of course also had to figure out the posing and we went through different stages for that. We had multiple shots of the dragon and decided to go with this one. When marketing is finished, we submit our project to Microsoft where they will do their QA, which means they'll take a look at our product and they'll make sure that it follows all the guidelines they provided for us. Once they accept the project, we're able to schedule the project for release and then it's basically just waiting for us. For some projects, uh, we do some extra marketing efforts on our social media channels. For Survival Plus Dragons, we, for example, posted a nice render to our Twitter to make people aware and excited about the project. The production of Survival Plus Dragons took a very long time. We spent nearly a year on this uh, second follow-up to the first one. Some of that is that it's the difficult second. Uh, this is where it becomes a series. Uh, how does it tie together with the previous one? How many features should overlap, how many new ones should be introduced. We also had to start planning the next ones. We have, we already have the three next survival pluses planned out to make sure that these rich features that we've added this time actually work in the next ones. You'll see them in new forms with new skins and new thematic styles in the, in the coming ones. That, that whole planning process and maybe a little bit late in the process, realizing that in creating survival plus dragons, we were not just creating this particular piece of content, but also creating future ones. Definitely caused some delays and some additions to the workload that we didn't quite foresee. After all that planning, all that producing, creating models, coding items and tools, this is Survival Plus Dragons.